During the bye week, what do NFL coaches do? They self-scout. They take a hard look at their own team to see what's working and what's not working. And one area that the Eagles will take a real hard look is red zone offense. Keep in mind, one year ago, in 2017, the Eagles were the best red zone offense in the NFL. This year, through their first eight games, they're right in the middle of the pack. There have been some misses, some situations where they could have scored, and they didn't. And as we know, red zone offense is so, so critical because you need touchdowns when you get into the red zone. And there's so many different reasons why these things happen. Sometimes it's a miscommunication. It could be a dropped pass. Simple things, the nuances, the details. There was an example of that last week against the Jaguars where the Jaguars came with a zero blitz in the high red zone and Carson Wentz threw it to Alshon Jeffrey who was number two to trips. Clearly Carson expected Alshon to break inside to cross the face of the defender, but Alshon didn't. Again, no one to blame, just a miscommunication in the red zone, the little details, the little nuances that separate touchdowns from field goals. But also keep in mind there's been a lot of positive as well. Here's a play that I really loved, and that is great execution and red zone design by the Eagles. They're going to start in a three by one set. Alshon Jeffrey is the single receiver to the left of the formation. But what the Eagles do here is they take Dallas Goddard and they motion him across the formation. So what that does is it shifts the strength of the Panthers secondary. Start with the safety on that side, Mike Adams. He now drops down to play Dallas Goddard. And what that does on the outside is James Bradbury, who was playing with outside leverage because he was expecting help from Adams. Now he becomes a man defender on Jeffrey and moves inside and plays with inside leverage. What this did is it gave the Eagles the matchup they wanted in the red zone. And red zone football is often about matchups. It was Jeffrey on Bradbury, and it was a touchdown. Great red zone design. So the bottom line point is this. There have been some miscommunications, there's been some mistakes, but we know that the Eagles do have excellent design and can execute. They just have to make sure they clean up some of these details, some of these nuances, and get back to where they were a year ago. It can happen in the final half of the season. Well, Mike, Greg just showed us how the red zone has been a little bit up and down for the Eagles this year, but when you're down inside that 20-yard line, you're trying to find the best matchups. And one area where the Eagles have been able to find those matchups is with the tight ends, what we call 12 personnel, one back, two tight ends on the field. And really, to me, this goes back to April. And when the Eagles trade back in the NFL draft, in the second round, they take Dallas Goddard at tight end, even though they've got the pro bowler, Zach Ertz, on the roster. And mm -hmm. fans everywhere are going, why were they drafting a tight end? This is why, for plays like this, we saw this past Sunday. Yeah, and I think that Doug Peterson and his staff, they understand and they know how to utilize the two tight end sets to their advantage. Because these tight ends are so versatile, they can do so many things, and they create a lot of matchup problems, and that's what we'll see. Yeah, so you see this here, a three tight end set. Kind of looks like it could be a run look. Yes. But they go play action. They're going to roll Carson Wentz here to his right, and you're going to hit Dallas Goddard here right down the field on the other side. Friend, when you go three tight ends, most defenses, they're going to counter with big nickel. They're going to counter with bigger bodies. So the versatility that these guys bring to the party just makes it difficult to cover them. When they sneak him across the formation and he ends up in the perfect position. So this one's taken away, but he's in a perfect position. He doesn't try to get outside this corner. He just snuggles up inside of him. And because all the action is going away, it creates a nice lane behind all of these defenders on their backside that you've got this easy throw to Dallas Goddard and love the way he becomes a runner once he gets the ball into his hands, able to avoid right here, get the block that he needs and into the end zone. Just a talented guy with a lot of upside. No question. And I think his presence really has allowed the Eagles to really expand what they do in these 12 and 13 personnel sets. And yep. we see Zach Ertz every single week. Opponents have to come into this game thinking, we have got to stop number 86. He's tearing up defenses. He's so productive. He's on a record-breaking pace. Mm -hmm. Every week, the Eagles find ways to get him the football where he is seemingly wide open. And one of the things that they do, and I know that you're a big fan of this as well, they go into these 12 personnel 
personnel packages, and then they spread the whole defense out. They like to go that. empty. And it's, I, it's, I love that. It's great because and I know you can speak to this from when you played. When you're a big body and you get out in space, that's tough for another big body defensively to try and match up with you. So when the Eagles come out and you've got two tight ends on the field and they're out in space, you put a running back like Wendell Smallwood out in space, the Carolina Panthers match here with three linebackers, and look how much space all those guys have to cover. Talk about the, the stress that this kind of look can present a defense. Well, they know right away, friend, that it's zone defense. Corner's going to come out here on the halfback, yep. so you know it's zone. They're going to play zone. So the key here is to get into this void because you know they're going to create a void and put stress on this guy and that he's wrong in whatever he does. No question, and that's really where both of these tight ends kind of come into play, and you're going to see as this play rolls just how they're able to attack the intermediate area of the field and again create a wide open void in the middle of the field. Look at all of this space yeah. for Zach Ertz to kind of operate here. They're just doing a nice simple high-low on the linebacker. Here's Goddard underneath. It's beautiful. Yeah, this linebacker has to take Goddard because he can't just leave him free and then it creates this huge void. Again, game planning, understanding what responsibilities are of these defenders and taking advantage of those responsibilities. Mm -hmm.